Hello everyone, Aldo here with JSC Props, and today I'm going to be showing you how to weather your uh, boots, whether it be uh, Din Djarin from The Mandalorian, or just any boots in general that you want to add some uh, dirt and grime to it. I'm actually going to go ahead and leave links down in the description with both the websites of where I got the boot covers uh, to the paints that I've used, uh, so go ahead and feel free to check those out whenever you have time. To start off, I actually went ahead and roughed everything up with sandpaper. Uh, you can use any grit sandpaper, although I found 120 to 220 grit works the best. Now, if you have a pair of these and they are actually sewn together like crowd props are, you actually want to be careful when you're sanding and you want to make sure that you go around or just by the edge of where it's sewn because if you actually go ahead and pretty much just sand right on top of the stitching, uh, it's pretty much going to undo that section. Now, apart from just making sure that you don't go over the stitching, you kind of do want to get as close as possible to it. Uh, but on bigger areas like these, you can just go to town with the sandpaper. Once you're pretty much done, sanding everything down you're gonna see that it looks a little bit more worn it doesn't look as new as whenever you first get these nice boot covers something i do want to add is that the real leather sands a lot better for this effect than the fall leather covers for the fall leather covers you're probably going to want to use paints instead of sandpaper just because of how that vinyl like material uh, sands. It doesn't like being sanded that much. The paints that I use to further weather these boots, I actually use Model Masters Acrylics Dark Tan, Flat White, Wood, and Sand. Now I chose these just because Din Dujarin's boots specifically look very sandy they look very worn but it doesn't look like it actually has much dark grime to it so i went with some really light colors now on here i actually ended up getting a little bit of uh, the sand i believe on me so i actually just went ahead and used it to kind of test the much more prominent really light area of his right boot and as you can see here, I'm just kind of going going ahead and just getting the base down real quick. Now on my computer, I actually had a picture of the right boot uh, pretty zoomed in. And I was trying my best to get the general shape blob, if you will, down. I'm not sure if this area is either just really, really sanded to the point that you get that uh, white uh, look on the leather or if it was bleached or what actually gave the this blotch to this color uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and try my best to replicate the the blob uh, let's call it that now you can see that I stopped and I didn't try to blend it that much at the very top and the reason for that is that we're gonna have our shin armor actually covering majority of it you only see a portion of this blob so i'm not too worried about you know the hard stop on the top of the boot i did however make sure to paint pretty high up of the boot just in case just to give me enough clearance in the event that i don't know the shin came up a little bit or something like that Whenever you're weathering something, whether it be boots or a prop or just about anything, you kind of have to keep in mind where exactly that grime is either going to get stuck or where that part's going to get banged up the most, if that makes sense. Uh, for example, here I was trying to go pretty heavy around the toe tips or just pretty much around the areas where you get, would get a lot of bend. I also tried to get uh, some of the paint inside the actual crevices where the uh, stitches or the edges of the sections would kind of stop and overlap. This is just something where, in my opinion, you know, over time, sand and dust and just dirt would just kind of get stuck in there. If you were trying to clean, clean them off or just kind of rub them off, it would all just get stuck in the nukes and crannies, if you will. 
Here I actually decided to end up mixing a little bit of the sand with some of the dark tan paint just to give me a more a less of a white and more going towards like a creamy color. I actually ended up doing this to give a less uniform color and just to kind of make it look a little bit more dirty uh, and i actually think i did this with a couple of other colors uh just as long as you stained in, in that slightly off white to a sandy to a little cream color now i'm just gonna go ahead and speed this up a little bit just because i don't want you to sit through me just essentially just painting the whole boot i, I actually went ahead and painted over a little bit of the, the rubber sections uh, in front uh, these I ended up sanding all a little bit uh, but just enough to kind of give a consistent uh, weather look just so it doesn't abruptly stop at the uh, at the rubber of the boots Now, once I actually got enough coverage that I liked, I actually went back and went over everything again with 120 grit sandpaper. And I just started going around the areas where I painted heavily for the most part. And I actually just started taking off little by little until it got to a color or a look that I liked. Again, some of the areas that I concentrated on the most were around the toe tips. And this is just because you know your toe tips are probably going to be banging up against things and hitting things or even in action you know you're kicking some droids and whatnot uh, so i actually tried my best to make these areas look the most worn uh, out of everything again be careful with the uh, stitching make sure you take your time around it uh, whenever you go around the edges or around this uh, U shape uh, per se. Uh, now for the big splotch, I actually didn't touch it too much uh, except for a little bit where I didn't like it and then I liked it and then didn't like it again. Uh, so that's I guess just to how you personally like it. All right, now that we're done sanding, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of dust them off to get anything that's clinging onto the leather. And this is pretty much how they look like. Now at this point I think I realized that I probably went a little too heavy with the sanding and I didn't like that it didn't look weathered enough. So what I actually ended up doing was going over them again with the dark tan and the sand mixture. And then here I am once again dipping into that concoction of dark tan and sand paint uh, to do the little splotch with a little toothpick just to kind of give it a little more pointy end because uh, I just kept looking back and forth on the picture and then to the boots and then to just kind of go over it real quick I just kind of went pretty far away I'd say maybe about 12 inches or so and I just kind of went over the whole boot just to kind of give it a more dusty uh, sanded effect on top of everything uh, and I actually liked doing that uh, after I did more heavy areas or just areas that I would get closer to and after the second pass I was actually pretty happy on how they looked here I'm actually bringing out the other boot that I had sanded but not painted just so you can kind of see the difference and you can see that the right boot now looks a lot more worn a lot more sandy it's probably been to Tatooine one too many times and I actually ended up liking this result a lot now I had actually gone ahead and done the left boot off camera uh, I did the exact same process minus the big blotch in the middle just because his left boot doesn't have any uh, I guess uh, big recognizable marks per se but uh, as you can see uh, I went pretty heavy uh, around the, the front of the boot the, the toe areas or where you know you would bang up against things or just you know from kicking around kick rocks uh, from not getting your bounty or anything uh, but it's a pretty simple and pretty straightforward process uh, to do and it really really adds a lot of character to your boots whether again be the dinch jar boots or just any uh, boots or you know leather parts that you might have 
And yeah, that's pretty much it. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial or instructional video. Uh, please feel free to leave me any type of feedback uh, or just contact me with any feedback. I will most definitely take that feedback and implement it sometime in the future. And I also hope that you stick around the channel just because I am going to be uploading more videos, whether it be instructional videos or just update videos of projects. Uh, I do have a pretty big project coming up here with the Dark Side Closet. We're both working on some stuff that you guys are going to like. And I also had some folks uh, ask me about how to paint their Viber Blade kits on sale at jscprops.com, by the way. And I do plan on showing you guys how to paint and weather those as well. Again, I really hope that you guys like the video. You know, like, subscribe, whatever all those big YouTubers say. And I'll see you around.